Hi everyone, and welcome to my next video tutorial, which will be focused on configuring environment variables in Django by making use of the python.env package. Now there are many packages that you can use in Django to configure environment variables, such as Django Environ, Python Decouple, and as you can see here, we can also use python.env. Now you're probably wondering why on earth should we use environment variables? So we need to use environment variables to ensure that we keep all of our sensitive data or information secure. This may include sensitive API keys in the form of payment integration. So those API keys pertaining to Stripe or PayPal, you may want to secure. You may also want to secure your database username and password if you're including an external database that is cloud hosted. And you can also go ahead and secure information such as your secret key, for example. All right, so what we want to do is go ahead and set this up. Now, the only prerequisites that you need to actually get started here is you need to make sure that you have a basic Django project. It can be very simple. So as you can see, I just have one installed here. So very basic, that's all you need. You don't need anything specific. Now, what we're going to do first of all is install the python.env package within our virtual environment. So make sure you don't install it globally, but in a virtual environment. So you can copy that package and in your virtual environment. So let me stop my server. So if your server is running, just go ahead and stop it. You want to just add in the following command, which is pip install python.env in the v virtual environment here. We go ahead and install that. Perfect. So we can now see it was installed. That's great. Now we want to move on to the next set of steps. And that is to go ahead and import and initialize python.env in our settings.py file. So you want to head over to your settings.py file. Okay. And you want to head over to the, the top of your settings.py file and just below the pass here that you see. So from import pass, just below this, you can go ahead and specify the requirements that you need um, for the following. So I like to do it just below the base directory here, just to ensure that we don't get any issues or errors. So I'm just going to put it here, but make sure it's at least below pass. You want to go ahead and say from dot env import load dot env. And then you want to say import OS. And followed by that, you want to load dot env. So you want to say load dot env with open parentheses here accordingly. So essentially what's going to happen is this load.env function here is going to load our environment variables from a .env file. So this .env file is essentially going to house our environment variables along with the values that we want to make use of. And then essentially what's going to happen is the reason why we're adding OS here is OS is used for accessing our operating system. This is why we are importing it so that we can go ahead and save our environment variables according to the system of the computer itself. All right. Now, what we're doing here essentially is we need this load.env to carry this out for us. So the next set of steps would involve creating a .env file in the root directory of our project. So it's very important where you put your .env file. I know a lot of people get this wrong their first try, so make sure you put it in the right location. But before we do that, some of you may have questions. Some of you may notice that if you go ahead and, and import load.env or import OS, it does show with a warning, maybe something like um, resolved pylons error or something like that. It will usually show in a white line here or a yellow, should I say, excuse me. So this is because you haven't configured your Python interpreter. So what you would need to do is configure it with your virtual environment. Now, some of you may not have this problem. If you don't, you can just ignore what I'm saying now. But if you do have an issue with this, what you would need to do is configure your Python interpreter. So what you can do is head over to where your project is situated and you want to look for your virtual environment folder. So here is my virtual environment folder right here. And what I want to do is in uh, Visual Studio Code, I want to say Control, Shift, and P. And then I want to say Select Interpreter and Enter Interpreter Pass. And then you want to go to that folder where your virtual environment is. And in that root URL, the addresser, you want to copy that and paste it here as the pass to your interpreter and press Enter. Okay, and then after about 10, 15 seconds, this yellow marking should uh, dissipate. So just keep that in mind. So that's how you can go ahead and do that. So I just want to close the folder here and let's continue. All right, now the next thing we need to do, like I said, is we need to create a .env file at the root of our project directory. 
So our project directory will be essentially right here. So my Django project is called Elevate and this is just an app that I have and uh, I have my default DB SQLite database and manage.py. This would signify the root of our directory. So you can right click on your Django project, say new file and you want to say .env. Right? And this would stipulate as a root directory, which is going to point to uh, load.env. Yeah, and this is where you want to go ahead and create your environment variables and set it up accordingly. Right, so let's go ahead and set our environment variables or create them. So let's take a look here at what's sensitive in our application. So one that we can all agree on would be the secret key. So what you can do is create an environment variable and I'm going to name it the same as secret key and I'm going to add it in here and say equals and you need to add in the value. So if it is a string value, okay, you must not add in the quotes because automatically with python.env, it's going to automatically go ahead and add in quotes for you if it is a string. So what I mean by that is don't include the string, just include the raw value itself in between the quotes and add it in. If you include the quotes, you're going to run into errors, so make sure you don't do that. So this is a typical way in which you can go ahead and set up your environment variable. So we've created one here, and here is our value for our secret key. All we need to do now is we can now go ahead and remove the valuable value in the quotes here for secret key, and we need to reference this environment variable that we have here. So we need to now go ahead and reference it accordingly. Now, if you want to go ahead and reference it, you would just need to simply state the following. That is os.environ, okay? You're gonna say .get, and here it was in quotes. You're going to add in the name of your environment variable, which is also called secret key. So you can copy that, paste it in there, and you're all set and ready to go. So that's how you can go ahead and configure your environment variables accordingly. Now, what you can also do is you can go ahead and set your environment variables here for your, your database username, database password, etc. So if you're using an RDS database from AWS or if you're using a Postgres database from Render or Railway, etc., these would be good use cases to set up your environment variables and everything. Now, what we need to do now is we just want to test if it's working. So we can just run our server. And if there are any errors, um, we will be well aware if it was configured incorrectly. So just run your server then. And you want to head over to your application. Just refresh a few times and just make some get requests. And you can see this is perfectly fine. Now, let's say, for example, you said secret keys and you misspelt your, uh, your environment variable. Okay, and we stopped the server and we attempted to go ahead and run it. Okay, and let's say we refreshed our page. You can see it says a server error occurred, please contact the administrator. So this indicates to us thing that we've configured our secret key correctly in our .env file because it's now showing as it should. So you can just set it back to where it was, restart your server and refresh and there we go back to where we are. All right. So that's how you can simply configure environment variables using python.env. Now, something I want to mention is whenever you deploy your application and let's say you're deploying your application and you want to store your code in GitHub via a private repository. So something to note, make sure you always store your code in a private repository, unless you have a very specific reason to add it in a public repository for safety. You want to ensure that you add your .env file to a .git ignore file. So make sure you, you say .git ignore. So when you go ahead and you push your code to, um, let's say, a, a repository on GitHub, that when you have that git ignore file, you're going to git ignore this .env file so it doesn't show in your repository. Even if it's in a private repository on GitHub, you want to be as safe and secure as you can be. So that's just something important to note when you go ahead and deploy your application and if you're using Git and GitHub, etc. So something very important to note. All right, guys, so that's it. Very simple, very easy. That's how you can configure environment variables in Django using Python. Uh, .env. So I always think it's the couple, but it's python.env to be clear. And I'll also attach uh, this link here in the description below. If you want to read a little bit more on the homepage, read the docs a little bit just to understand python.env. Now they're all very similar in terms of environ and of course, python decouple and .env all similar in their use case. But yeah, that's it guys. And as always, thank you for the support and see you next time.